This season, we take a look at the restaurants putting Malaysian ingredients front and center as we comb the best of north to south of the peninsula for a true and local exploration. Oh. Malaysian flavors. The island state of Penang is a globally renowned food mecca, drawing visits from travelers far and wide. In the heart of its capital city, Georgetown, nestles Restaurant Au Jardin, a rising star in Penang's blooming fine dining scene. Cooking up fine fare from ingredients grown, harvested, and caught from in and around the island is chef proprietor Kim Hok Su. Hi, I'm Kim Hok Su from uh, Restaurant Au Jardin. So, we started this place um, three years ago in 2018. So, prior to this, we were based in Taipei. So, in terms of the cooking style, it's very much um, cooking French technique but uh, a lot of local ingredients. Mainly 30 to 40% of our ingredients are actually from the island itself. To look at all the fresh produce is wow. Yeah. This is amazing. Raymond Tam and Alex Chia. This will be my first time to dine in Au Jardin. Hi guys, welcome to the restaurant Au Jardin. Hi, so, right. so it must be Alex and Chef Raymond. Yep. Yeah. Alright, okay. I'll show you guys to our lounge for the pre-drinks for the dinner. Restaurant manager Alvin Tai mixes up a delicious cocktail for our guests. Made with Martel cognac and a fruit native to Penang, nutmeg. I mean, it's actually the cognac add the layers, you know, to the this drink, nutmeg. I love it, but you can still taste a quite a strong this uh, nutmeg flavour. So great, so you guys will uh, even enjoy our dinner. Looking forward. Hi okay, guys, so pay attention. Huh? We have two VIPs in tonight. Chef, owner and co-founder of Beta and Skillet KL. I think most probably I will go for the duck. Hi guys, just check, I guess ready for your order? Yep. I'm going for the duck. I will go for the white one. But the chef will insist for you guys to try the one from Cooper and we'll make a small portion for guests to share. Chef insists, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Hey chef, walk on to a meal please. Chef Kim Hock begins his menu with a dish of corn and anchovies. That's a play of sweet and savoury, hot and cold. Corn meringue is served with ice cream and anchovies and then smoked right before serving. I know uh, he's doing uh, modern European, but with the local touch. I heard so much good thing about him, so I can't wait to try. Right, so uh, this would be your first course for tonight. So uh, what you have in front of you is our uh, ice cream sandwich. Uh, it's a corn sandwich. Yep. So uh, at the very bottom layer, you have the uh, corn water meringue, which is a sugarless meringue. Uh, we make it with corn water. And then in between, you have a ice cream. Uh, and we kind of season it only with salt and a bit of uh, refined coconut oil. So it acts as a protective layer. And then on top, you have the uh, anchovy version, and you have a bit of corn and a bit of pickled uh, onions. So the final step before sending this out is to smoke it. So it has this uh, savory element. So similar to all our other menu, uh, the first dish, it normally comprises of uh, local vegetable. Uh. Right. Yes. Thank you. Please enjoy. Bye. Corn ice cream sandwich. The bottom is a meringue. This reminds me of the um, jagung ice cream, like the, the potong. The ice, ice cream, cream potong, right? Yeah. I actually like the corn texture. I yeah. have the contrast with the meringue. Yeah. Sugarless. And he used a, a thin layer of the uh, coconut oil to give that kind of uh, magnum ice cream coating. Yeah. And also the corn is actually give extra texture to the entire thing, right? To the ditch. 
interesting. His next course brings a shellfish that will intrigue even the most seasoned seafood connoisseur. Horseshoe crab, a prehistoric crab that has been around for more than 300 million years and found in abundance in the waters of Penang. I never tried a horseshoe crab before and I think horseshoe crab is one of the oldest creature date yeah. back to 240 years? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so there is something that we have been discussing. This is cooked with mud crab and flavoured with little more than kaffir lime leaves and a tom kha sorbet. So the whole idea is still instilling the, the cultural elements and the ingredients from the local terroir. This is what our diners would actually expect from us. Uh. Selby. Yes. And this is the most look forward to the desserts here in the menu. And you always like Tom Ka. I bet the saltiness is actually from the roll. And also the nori. I didn't expect the sorbet is actually more the savoury side because I suppose it's still like creamy. It's still creamy. A bit probably like hot and spicy as well. But the roll enhances the creaminess uh, and a bit of the texture. A bit of texture. I'm quite surprised because the roll is actually it's not popping. It's not popping. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's not popping. It's a bit like the crab roll. But, but it's a bit hard. You know, it's yeah. hard, right? It's not... The steam yeah. crab roll. Yeah. Probably my expectation, like, you know, I was expecting something going to be wow. But, okay. It's interesting. The menu moves on to river prawns. One fried into golden tempura and the other cured in salt and lightly seared. Next, Chef Kim Hock brings lobster to the table. It's flesh pickled and its head made into a lobster jelly. It is served with add-ons of sturgeon caviar for a real umami bomb. I like the texture of it actually. I mean like Chef Kim suggested, you know, you have three different layers. Normally it's quite a classic to flambe the lobster with some cognac. Maybe you can try. Are you suggesting me to? Yeah, why not? Can try yeah. maybe? Okay, let's maybe do it. We can we have uh, cognac? I mean, do you have any cognac to offer? Probably I want to try it together with this uh, yeah. grand caviar right. by okay. Chef Kim. Yep, sure. Alex gets a playful idea that involves a bit of martel. How is it? Yeah. yeah, I have to agree with you, Chef. I mean, it actually gives some richness to the dish. Some depth. Yep, some depth. I have to say that it's going to be a perfect match. It's Maybe fine. you want to ask Chef Kim to come and try? Hey. Hi, Chef Kim. So, I just try something new, something that for me, you know, a compliment to your dish. May yeah. I just offer you to try your grand caviar with the cognacs? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It works like a, a prawn beast, huh? Yeah. I never tried cognac with caviar before, usually, you know, champagne, vodka. Yeah. But with cognac, it's a new experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think we're going to work with that. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to finish your, your whole caviar. <laughs> <laughs> it's spontaneous, but it works. Chef Kim Hock continues on his seafood serenade with Hokkaido scallops cooked a la Grenobloise with capers espuma, brown butter emulsion, more crispy capers, raisin and toasted bread. So, very simple combination, but definitely what we love with seafood. The spring roll filled with the um, capers foam. The capers foam, right? That's what Chef was telling me. Is this some, some anchovies? Raisin. 
to give some sweetness. So what do you think, Chef, about this dish? I like all the texture that how he actually break down the whole dish uh, from a classic. It's a very comfort and well-balanced dish. The menu resumes with a wild caught grouper, lightly steamed and dressed with black garlic emulsion, cabbage, trout roe, and smoked mushroom dashi. Fish looks very moist. And usually, you know, for me, steamed fish, right? Yeah. The skin, it could be a tricky part. But this one is. Yep, just nice. It's something unique, I mean, something different from like the common how people prepare the fish. During the five months lockdown, kind of managed to crack the whole idea on how you could steam a piece of grouper and achieve a good tightness on the skin and the flesh at the same time. The cabbage has been lightly glazed with the black garlic. Become black is because of the mallet reaction. Mm. It actually gives it very complex. So for, for me, uh, the whole dining experience or the food is like, a, is like a music. The star dish of the night presents itself as a cognac and hay aged duck. Brushed with Martel VSOP cognac before roasting and smoked with hay smoke before serving. If there's anything I present to you, our hay aged duck. The, our ducks are actually sourced from uh, Butterworth. The local ducks is always lack of a uh, gamey flavour. And then uh, for us, that's always a shortcoming. So the whole idea is how to instill back the flavour into the duck itself. So what we did was uh, we stuff hay in, we brine it, and then we let it age for a couple of days. And eventually we left it out to dry, dry completely. And prior the service, what we did was uh, we just roast them in the oven and then the very final stage is to smoke them before carving them out and serving it over to you. Something I've been craving for because I dined in Al Jadam before. Yeah, this is something that I've been looking at and look forward to as well for me. I'm happy to have this again. With this cognac into it, it adds some complexity to it. I appreciate it as it is. The duck is, is very tender. No, the gamey taste, sometimes you know, it could be tricky. I mean, for a local duck, right? And the juice maison, and also with this apricot. It's actually balanced up entire dish. The careful brushing of cognac on duck pays off. Bolder flavours on the menu is presented with the Tochigi A3 Wagyu ribeye. Served with fresh herbs, jus, maison and homemade grained mustard. For me, the Wagyu is very, very delicate. Uh, I think probably I don't really need the uh, mustard. So I believe that this wayu has been fattened up uh, for almost 30 months and that area of that uh, wayu, that perfecture is uh, mainly is a rice production. For me, the uh, mustard was a little bit overpowered for such a delicate uh, wayu. Chef Kim Hock wraps things up with a dessert of deconstructed apple pie. Served in the form of Granny Smith apple and parsley sorbet with candied fennel, Greek yogurt, and pâté sucré. So your final dish is basically our rendition of the tatopong. So tatopong is actually uh, apple pie or apple tart. So what we have underneath is basically all the elements of tatopong. Uh, and on the side you have a bit of uh, apple crisp, a bit of uh, olive oil, and last but not least, the tarragon. Very different of the French apple tart. Very refreshing. Somehow you still get a hint of apple pie, yep. right? Yep. 
So if you close your eye and enjoy this dish, probably we will mm, yeah. I'm having apple pie. Exactly. So probably we have to come back again <laughs> to Penang. <laughs> For sure. It is not a menu without thought. <laughs> But it is a solid, all-rounded dining experience that our guests enjoyed thoroughly. A dinner as impressive as this is capped off with a deserving toast of Martel Cognac. The food of Ujaran is uh, very much very humble uh, sources. So we, we, want, we want the diners to live happily and knowing that every single cent that they spend here is made value. For me, I will definitely come back Thank you, Chef. Yeah, and the head chef is here. Yeah, thank you so much. Well done. Yeah. Of course, you have a very strong team as well. Yeah, I can see there's a lot of... Uh, it's a team effort. Everything Chef Kim Hock creates with his team is underpinned by respect for fresh, seasonal local produce and, more importantly, the place they call home. Penang. Chef on Chef is brought to you by Martel. Drink responsibly. Thank you for watching this episode of Chef on Chef. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, First Class is giving away two dinner for two couples. For more information, please log on to www.firstclass.com.my. Thank yes. you. Okay. You know what will actually really go well? Yeah. I've got this left from yesterday. Wow. Right. I mean, cognac for breakfast. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sure we can manage this. And the, the work is there as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, right? The reason why I'm bringing you guys here is because, uh, as compared to a lot of Chao of Fun Place, this has more savory umami taste. Uh. I think this can only be obtained from the, the seafood that they get. But also, I think what was really nice is basically the good amount of for pay. Well, sometimes uh, uncle when when he did this stir fry, the the chow fan, he he don't do it in big amount. Uh, it's two three plates ago, two three plates ago, and normally uh, you you get a, a long queue. So sometimes you have to wait up to an hour or so. Okay, like this. Quite long, quite long, eh? Yes, 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 yes.